Good morning. Our worship this morning begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your program. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning, St. James and visitors. This is a reading from the Old Testament book of Ezekiel. It's chapters 34, chapters 11 through 16, and 20 to 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with a good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down. Says the Lord God, I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged. I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, one servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Here ends the reading. Please join me in saying aloud Psalm 100 as printed on the online bulletin or found on page 729 in the Common Book of Prayer. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are all of his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord God is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. This is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. It's chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. 
I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God of your Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. According to the working of his great power, God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly place, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all the things of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory and all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are my, members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those in his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you gave me no clothing. Sick and imprisoned and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Almighty God, give us ears to hear, minds to understand, and the will to do those things you teach us this day. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It's the last Sunday of the church year. Next week, we start Advent, the beginning of the church year, where we prepare for the Feast of the Incarnation. But today we remember that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The earliest creed of the church was very simple. Jesus is Lord. Now if Jesus is Lord or King, then Caesar was not Lord and King. If Jesus is Lord, then no other person is Lord and no other person is King. 
In this past election, which is still being fought and counted, the political parties, the candidates, and their supporters spent well over $14 billion trying to determine who would govern or rule the United States. $14 billion. And more is still being spent. But contrary to the partisans among us, neither Donald Trump nor Joseph Biden nor Nancy Pelosi, nor Mitch McConnell, nor any governor is Lord, and none of them are king or queen. Jesus is king, and Jesus is Lord. But if you look at our world, particularly in 2020, how can Jesus be king when our world is so full of hatred, war, disease, hunger, injustice, and oppression. If Jesus were truly Lord and King, then all of these would not be issues, would they? But the church has always said that Jesus is Lord. So what's up? Are we in the church delusional? Are we blind to the pain, injustice, and poverty, and other problems of the world, or do we hold Jesus accountable for them? No. The men and women who have been the greatest advocates for the poor and for justice and for health have been subjects of King Jesus. Between his baptism and the beginning of his ministry, Jesus is tempted by Satan. Satan claims to be able to give Jesus all the kingdoms of the world if he will only worship him. The kingdoms of the world, which, by the way, technically belong to Jesus already, and Satan makes this offer, and Jesus does not dispute that Satan has the authority to offer him these kingdoms. It seems that Satan, not Jesus, was in charge of the world back then. And looking around us today, I can't see how we can say it's any different. Satan seems to be one calling the shots today. So why do we still say that Jesus is king? We do so because Jesus is the rightful king, while Satan is a usurper, a, place, a person who claims to be the king, but it's an imposter, a pretender. Satan actually has support of most of the people in the world today, even some of those who call themselves Christians, because we have bought into Satan's lie that power makes right. Whether it's power of force, or the power of the ballot box, or the power of wealth, or whatever power, according to Satan, power makes right. And that's the way the world works today. Jesus is the rightful king of creation, though being the one through whom all creation was made. But for now, he holds his crown in exile, much like the kings and queens of Europe did during the Nazi occupation. So if Jesus is king, but in exile, what does that make us, those of us who follow Jesus as Lord and Savior? That makes us the resistance. We are here to resist Satan's rule and to tell the people that the true king is coming and we should be ready to welcome him when he does come. When we imagine Jesus as king, we imagine him arrayed in fine robes, sitting on a throne, much like the stained glass window back there or at the back of the church. And these are good images because they remind us that we're not just citizens of the United States or of any country on earth, but we are also subjects of King Jesus. Now, Jesus' version of kingship is very different from Satan's. Satan rules through power, force, and intimidation. Jesus rules through weakness, surrender, and service. As human beings, we like our leaders to be strong and forceful, not weak. But Jesus' strength is his weakness, and his weakness is strength. In Luke's version of the Last Supper, the disciples are arguing over who is the greatest among them, which of them will be prime minister 
when King Jesus begins to rule. And Jesus tells them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest and the leader as one who serves. For who is greater, one who reclines at table or one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at table? But I am among you as the one who serves. Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the incarnate Son of God, the one through whom all things were made, is among us as one who serves. And today Jesus tells us that we can find him among the poor, the weak, the sick, the naked, the hungry, and the homeless. This is not what we want our kings to be. We want our kings to be strong, powerful, and majestic, not weak, powerless, and smelly. Yet Jesus tells us that we will find him in these people, the weak, the powerless, and yes, even the smelly. So we are the resistance. And as the resistance, we have three tasks, three jobs to do. The first is to, as the name implies, resist. We are to resist and fight against those who have usurped the authority of King Jesus for their own ends. And we are given only one weapon with which to defeat the powers of darkness that currently rule God's world. And that weapon is God's agape love. Agape love is God's unmerited love, the love that seeks only the welfare and the good of the beloved. We cannot defeat Satan with anger and hatred. His is much older and stronger than ours. We can only defeat Satan with agape love. So we must practice giving and receiving agape love here among ourselves in St. James and among those who our, our king told us to seek out the poor, the oppressed, the homeless, the naked, the hungry, the sick, and those in prison. Our second task as the resistance is to prepare ourselves and each other for the coming of the true king, the coming of Jesus. We do this through prayer and study, and being active in ministry. We do this by asking God to send his grace so that we can live our lives as he directs rather than as we want to live our lives. We need to be involved in daily prayer and, as far as is possible, weekly attendance at worship. We need to be involved in the study of God's Word and the study of the Christian life. And with the advent of Zoom classes, we really don't have an excuse to not attend Christian education. Finally, we need to be involved in ministry, both inside and outside the church particularly ministry to the least of these, as our king calls them. This, too, is hard to do today. Both St. James and the Episcopal Diocese of Dallas have opportunities to give, since we can't be too personally involved during the coronavirus, to help the poor and the oppressed. To give the Episcopal Diocese of Dallas and their effort among the, the poor in the southern part of the city, go to edod.org. In the upper right, click on the giving page link. There's a similar link on St. James, stjamesdallas.org, and a, a link for giving there. Or you can bring what we're collecting. We'll find that in the James Journal. Peanut butter, meat products, to tomato products, macaroni and cheese. Our third task is to recruit other members to join the resistance. We need to be evangelists, to reach out among those whom the enemy still has in his hands, to let God deliver them out of the enemy's hands. We don't convert anybody, we don't deliver anybody, and we certainly don't save anybody. Those tasks belong to God. Our job is to be faithful witnesses to the joy and peace and love found within those who follow Jesus as King, Lord, and Savior. 
As a friend of mine once put it, conversion is a management responsibility. We work in sales. There are several ways to evangelize or to be evangelists, but the most effective i found is to become friends with people who don't know Jesus. And then when the time is right, introduce your friend to your friend Jesus. Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. His authority and power are exercised through surrender and service, not strength and intimidation. To seek King Jesus, we need to look for him not among the great, but among the weak and the oppressed. And while Jesus is King and Lord, for now he holds his throne in exile, and Satan rules on earth, making us the resistance. And as the resistance, we have three tasks. To resist Satan and those who follow him with the weapon of agape love, to prepare ourselves and each other for the time when Jesus overthrows the pretender and is king, and to recruit others to join the resistance with us. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form one, found on page 383 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your service bulletin. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and George and Michael, our bishops, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Donald, our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this cement city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those on our parish prayer list, for our police and firefighters, for the men and women of our military, for those suffering from coronavirus, and those working to treat those suffering, for the oppressed and those who are fighting against injustice, and for those who have turned to violence, that you would turn their hearts from violence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, 
for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. James and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon all who turn to you for, for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another. Good morning, St. James. We are glad that you have joined us today for our online worship this Christ the King Sunday. Um, I hope you enjoyed Deacon Phil's sermon. I know that I did. Um, you're always welcome to send him feedback. I know that we all, as sermon uh, folks, we love to get feedback on our sermons, so please um, uh, reach out to him. Listen, uh, we have a few announcements. Um, all of those are in your bulletin. Uh, there's a few that are, are pertinent to our, to our worship and to our, our time here uh, this coming week. Uh, we are uh, uh, kicking off the week of Thanksgiving, and so uh, the office will be open on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We will be closed on Thursday and Friday this week uh, for, for the Thanksgiving holidays. Uh, if you need to reach one of the clergy um, on the back of the bulletin, uh, you can find all of our numbers. Uh, just reach out to us, uh, call us on our cell phones, and we will respond to you as quickly as possible. Um, and we have uh, our goat drive still going on. Not coat drive, but goat drive for the Botwa uh, working with the Kellerman Foundation. So please give your donations. Uh, $50 will buy a goat. Uh, if you can't afford uh, to buy a whole goat, you can buy part of a goat. And we'll put all the pieces together and buy a whole goat for a Botwa family. So please give generously we so appreciate that. And speaking of giving, we are in the middle of our stewardship campaign. We're really hoping to get this wrapped up by Thanksgiving. We need your help. Um, if you received a pledge card, we're asking, pleading, please fill that out. Send that back in to us or drop it by the church office this week so we can have that. Uh, we're really trying to put our budget together for uh, 2021 and to see uh, how we're doing, and we need your help. So please, if you did not receive a pledge card, uh, we have uh, a new parish administrator uh, that's, that is starting, uh, that has started this past week. Her name is Connie. Call in and tell Connie that you'd like to swing by and pick up a pledge card. She will meet you and get you that pledge card, and you can pick up your communion for 
for Thanksgiving service as well. Thanksgiving Eve on Wednesday, Thanksgiving Eve, 7 o'clock, we've got an online service. So you can kill two birds with one stone. You can drop off that pledge card and pick up your communion for our Thanksgiving Eve service. And we would love for you to join us for that Thanksgiving Eve service, uh, which will be at Wednesday at 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. We'd love for you to join us. Listen, there's lots more announcements, including Advent uh, offerings. We want you to be uh, active and participate. Even if you're at home and you're, and you're staying safe, which we hope that you are, um, you can still join us on our Zoom, Christian Ed, uh, as, as Deacon Phil mentioned in his sermon. Uh, there's really no excuse anymore. You can, you can be an active member of St. James and never show your face here. So we, we try to make that as easy as possible for you. Um, remember, uh, as we continue towards the end of the year, we can sure your, use your gifts. Um, uh, please send those in. Uh, you continue to give your pledges like you have this year. Thank you, St. James. Y'all have been so faithful to do that. Let's finish with. Uh, let's finish strong this year um, and get those pledges all caught up. We appreciate that. Listen, are there birthdays or anniversaries? If you're celebrating a birthday or anniversary, I would love to say a prayer with you. And uh, if you're not celebrating a birthday or anniversary, I invite you to join with us in a prayer. Um, on page eight of our of our service. Uh, pamphlet. Um, the prayer for the birthday is kind of right there in the center. Most of you good pr people probably know it by, uh, by heart, but I want to wish all you guys who are celebrating birthdays this week a happy birthday, and uh, I would like to say a prayer with you. So please pray with me. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Happy birthday. We're so glad that you're uh, joining us this, this day and receiving your blessing. If you are... Um, uh, celebrating an anniversary, uh, we would love for you to stand as you're able and for you couples to join right hands. And um, let, me, uh, let me offer a prayer and a blessing for you. Happy anniversary. Please pray with me. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the Institute of Marriage. In it, you show us the best of Christ's marriage to the church. And through it, we are able to grow not only closer to you, but closer to each other. Lord, I ask your blessing on these, your couples, as they continue through this journey, may they walk with you and use you as a, as a uh, rod to strengthen them. And Lord, continue to bless their relationship as they go forward from this point on and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you both now and evermore. Amen. You may kiss your bride. Well, we have uh, more to come. We have Holy Eucharist, and I hope you, uh, if you don't have your wafer, no worries. Uh, Father DJ will lead, lead us in a uh, prayer for spiritual communion, also offered to you in your, in your bulletin. So uh, please get that ready and be ready for, uh, for us to, um, to uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in Jesus Christ, our Lord, you have received you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens in your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night, he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We invite you now to receive communion uh, in your home. If, uh, if you were not able to uh, pick up communion, then uh, we offer the prayer for spiritual communion, which Father DJ will lead now. Let us pray. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are given this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving. 
I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Our post-communion prayer can be found on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your service bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Heavenly Father, you have have graciously accepted us as living members members of your your Son, Son, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.